Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Hannah and I have a temporary ileostomy. Now an ileostomy is a type of stoma, which basically is um, my intestine sticking out of my belly and I poo into a bag. We've been over this, we've covered this. There's a whole darn playlist all about this shit literal shit. So recently I made a video all about whether I could get pregnant and have kids with a stoma and in that I mentioned the fact that my ileostomy is temporary and I will have to decide at some point in the future whether I want it reversed to create a J pouch or if I want to have a permanent stoma. And I was like would you like to see a video on that and some of you <laughs> said yes and so that's what this video is. J pouch versus permanent stoma. However, it's not a versus situation. Like it isn't the fact that one is better than the other. Absolutely not. It is all about what is right for the individual person. Some people might get a choice in the matter. Some people might not. So, you know, every situation is different. I am currently in a situation where I do have a choice, but you never know. That choice might actually be taken away from me at some point depending on what my body decides to do. So yeah, it's not a competition. One is not better than the other. It is entirely down to the individual situation. So why is my ileostomy temporary? How would it be made permanent? And what the F is a J pouch? All great questions, I hear you asking. So my ileostomy is temporary because my rectum wasn't removed during the surgery. It was only my large intestine and my rectal stump is just still there, just hanging out, doing its own kind of annoying thing because it's inflamed at the moment. But it's there. And the reason why that makes it a temporary stoma is because you can reverse the stoma and create an internal ilioanal pouch system as long as the rectum is still there. I'm not a doctor, don't ask me why or how, that's just the way it is. So question two, how would you make the stoma permanent? By having surgery to remove the rectum. So some people in their first surgery, they might have their entire colon and rectum removed in that first surgery. And that would mean that they have a permanent stoma. But I can have another surgery that would remove my rectum and make my temporary stoma a permanent one. What? is a J pouch. I'm still not 100% sure. <laughs> First of all, Google it. Um, but from my understanding, basically they take what is left, which is the small intestine, and they fashion a J pouch out of it, which is basically like a new bowel. And it's called a J pouch because it's like in the shape of a J. It's like whoo! And that basically becomes your new large intestine. Like it functions in that way, in the sense that it like holds the stool before you then like get the urge to go and then you release it out of your rectum and into a toilet, hopefully. So the pouch system is created out of your small intestine. And I believe maybe they remove the rectum during that as well, but they, or they, they attach it to the rectum somehow. Again, not a doctor, but yeah. So then you would have an internal new system. And so you wouldn't have a stoma anymore. But a J pouch is not actually the same as a large intestine, it does function slightly differently. And for this video, I put a call out on my social media for people with temporary stomas, permanent stomas, and J pouches to share their experience. And so the folks with the J pouches are gonna have a lot more coherent things to say about that than me because I don't know that experience. But it is super useful to hear. So thank you, thank you so much to everyone who sent in clips and thank you for sharing your story with me and my audience and I hope that, I don't know, it sheds some light and raises awareness about the different options out there and offers some support for those like myself who are in the process of deciding which way to go and trying just to absorb as much information as possible. And I think it's also really useful to hear stories from other patients because I can look up online the risks of a stoma, risks of a J pouch and just read statistics and facts or whatever. But hearing from other patients, hearing from other people about their like day-to-day -day lives and what their experiences are, I find really valuable. Whilst also acknowledging that it is not guaranteed that I would have the same experience as someone else. It's just good to know to see how other people cope with various 
situations. So I asked everyone four questions and I'm going to let them take it away and then I will also be answering them. So the first question was, which did you choose and why? Was it an easy choice or did you not get a choice? I'm Emily, I'm 19 and I have a J pouch. I actually didn't get a choice. I was born with Hirschsprung's disease, um, which is why I had to have my colon removed. I had an ileostomy until I was about two or three. Um, and then my parents made the decision to give me the reconnection surgery and give me a J pouch. Hi, my name is Sarah. I have a permanent stoma called an ileostomy. Um, I needed my stoma because of intestinal dysmotility caused by Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. I was actually never offered a J-pouch. Uh, I went straight for the ileostomy, mainly because of the slow transit constipation. So that's different from things like Crohn's and colitis. So it's probably slightly different in the sense of I can have a J-pouch quite easily because there's no risk of sort of colitis or anything like that. It's permanent in the sense that I'm never gonna have it reversed. Technically, I still have my colon, but I had the loop stoma change to an end. So it's now harder for it to be reversed. My name is Anne and I'm 58, so I'm an oldie. And I had my J pouch about 16 months ago. It was not a hard decision. I'd had many, many years of suffering with ulcerative colitis. 25 approximately and three years of really really awful problems and my gastroenterologist tried everything and in the end they told me that surgery was the only way forwards so I agreed to have my colon removed but I always wanted to look at alternatives to having a permanent ileostomy. I did a lot of research about the J pouch and I decided that was for me. So a year after I had had my first surgery I had the second to form the pouch. My name is Ellie, I'm 40, uh, I have a stoma. I didn't have a choice in the end with getting my stoma. It just got to a point where they had their multidisciplinary meeting and decided that my colon had to go. So I had a subtotal collect me and um, Rosie, the stoma came about. Um, I actually had J-pouch surgery. I got diagnosed with ulcerative colitis in 2012. I tried every treatment available to me. I was basically told by my specialist that I really didn't have any other choice, that surgery was the only thing for me. So I had the surgery, uh, which was removing my bowel um, and creating a stoma. Um, basically, that was probably the best thing I've ever done in my life. Like I had no quality of life up to that point. My second stage surgery was basically to construct my pouch. The third stage surgery, which was my fourth surgery, um, basically everything went well this time. Uh, they removed my stoma or reversed it um, and closed me up. Um, basically uh, started to open up my new pouch and everything just worked well. My name is Billy, I am 23 and I have a stoma bag. My stoma was emergency surgery. Um, I had 11 months of unsuccessful treatment for my ulcerative colitis and I didn't get a choice. Vicky Smith, I am 37 years old, currently living with a permanent stoma. I wasn't given a choice in regards to my stoma surgery. Um, it was life-saving surgery and just kind of woke up and, and had a stoma. Hi, I'm Katie, I'm 23 years old and I have a stoma. So I have a permanent ileostomy. I decided to make my stoma permanent a year ago when I had the final surgery to remove my rectum and the last bit of bowel. For me it was quite an easy decision. I'd had my stoma for three years before I had my second surgery and it had gone really well. So this question isn't exactly relevant for me right now. I have not made the choice yet. I am very lucky that I currently do have that choice, but I am experiencing some inflammation in my rectum currently, although it's not debilitating, so I don't think it is a cause for having it removed earlier than I would like. The other thing that I did mention in my having kids with a stoma video is that I actually want to have children before I have any further surgery, whether that is to create a permanent stoma or create a J pouch. So if I can, this decision is actually for me not gonna happen for a while. The second question was, what is your lifestyle slash poo routine like? I love hearing about people's poo routines. My routine currently is I 
Um, wake up in the morning and I take my bag off and I get in the shower and then I come out the shower and put a new one on. Um, I do this every day. Poo routine, well, um, frequent is the only thing I can use to describe it. Um, my stoma is very active. Um, anywhere between 10 and 15 times a day but it can sort of like go in, in excess of 25 times if I'm in a flare-up. I usually go and empty my pouch about four to five times a day. That's on a good day. Um, I deal with diarrhea and constipation daily or weekly sometimes um, depending on like if I eat something that my J pouch doesn't like. On a bad day I can go anywhere from six to eight times a day. I also always pack extra clothes, underwear, pants in my bag for if I'm going out anywhere and just in case I soil myself or I need just an extra change of clothes. My second ileostomy was very difficult and causing me a lot of problems. I was going to the toilet about eight times a day and maybe two or three times at night and there were times when I thought, mm, what have I done? I'm back to square one. It's just like being really ill again. But as time goes by, the pouch starts to get used to the new situation it's finding itself in. Your body adjusts. And now I would say on average, it's four times a day and once at night. Sometimes I have days when it's a little bit more frequent. And yes, it's a nuisance, but I don't have pain. I don't have urgency. I can wait to go to the toilet. It's amazing. Um, and I feel like I've got my life back. So my lifestyle since having my stoma has been so much better. I used to be running to the toilet all the time. Before my first surgery, I was going 30, 40 times a day and was in a lot of pain. I was always anemic. Honestly, I'm just a lot better because of my stoma. And I know I was never well. I never had remission with my IBD. So to have remission is amazing. My poo routine is a lot easier now as well. So I get up in the morning and I empty my bag. Normally it's quite full <laughs> by the time I wake up, mainly of air as well. Um, so I'll empty it then. So I tend to empty it four to five times a day, which sounds a lot, but actually it's so simple. It's so easy to do and it's not like having to be like, it's not like, oh my god, I need to go empty my bag now. I kind of I kind of am in a routine with it. At the minute I change Rosie first thing in the morning at about half six and first empty is probably not till about three. So I'm quite lucky. But it's quite a good thickness as well. It's like toothpaste thickness, which is perfect. It's not too runny. I get the old runny bag, but otherwise it's fine. When everything is fine uh, with the J pouch, I go probably once at night and five to six times a day. Um, and that's fairly good compared to what I was going through when I had old school where it was probably like eight to ten times at night, anywhere up to 20 times during the day. For me, my poo routine is don't get any urges to poo because my stoma is just like constantly pooing. Like I'm pooing right now. And I maybe go to the toilet to empty it every time I go for a wee. I've never actually counted it, but maybe like between four and six times a day. And then I also go once in the night usually. Question three, have you had any complications? I'm lucky to not have had any complications. Um, my surgeon was fantastic and we had a couple of sort of skin issues under my bag but other than that I've been really lucky. I've not had any complications with the bag itself. Um, everything, I've had two blockages in four and a half years which considering I don't really monitor what I eat I'm kind of like oh, it'll be fine. Um, it's quite it's quite a miracle really that I've only had two. Um, I've had complications because of my IBD in the sense of I now have arthritis because of my ulcerative colitis. But apart from that, everything seems to be going okay, which is great. Complications, I did have um, minor complications at the beginning. I was in a hospital for two weeks after my surgery because they couldn't get my potassium levels under control they were just really low so as a result i just never want to see a banana ever again my rectal stump gave me problems i was going six to eight times a day uh with and without blood on and off and it was when it bled it was painful it was crampy um and so 
to stop that, I was given, I tried suppositories and I couldn't do it. Um, I just couldn't make them stay up there. I'm so sorry, Rosie's just sitting here farting away. And so I just was then put on enemas, mesalamine enemas. Then I moved on to the foam. Most people say they hate it because it was like a rocket going off up your bum, <laughs> but I loved them. They stayed in, they were great. I still had to plan to be around the toilet because usually and especially first thing in the morning there was a lot of urgency behind the mucus passing and a couple of times i didn't quite make it to the bathroom so i was always kind of still worried about being near a loo pretty much exactly two years after my surgery um i started to get pouchitis which is the same it, it is ulcerative colitis but of my new pouch and since then i've basically had bouts and flare-ups every probably like four to six months. When I'm going through a flare-up with pouchitis, um, it can get quite bad. It can be anywhere from uh, eight to ten times during the day and three to four times at night. So um, that does kind of wear on you a little bit. I've nearly had accidents before in public and for me, part of having the ileostomy was a bit a bit more security knowing that I've got a bag on so I'm not going to get like diarrhea in the traditional sense. I did have a lot of complications basically anything that could go wrong did. Um, I wasn't lucky if you'd like to use that word. Um, I had a fistula which after multiple surgeries um, including a skin graft which is, I believe is called a lotus um, petal surgery um, my body just rejected everything, um, so I didn't really have any options but to remove the J pouch and opt for a permanent stoma, which is where I am at at the moment. Life with UC is interesting and a challenge. Yes, I have had pouchitis quite a few times. The worst time I had it was in ninth grade. Um, when I was around 15, 16, and I got it and I was really sick for a while. I have a lot of experience with pouchitis, and usually it happens if I hold it in and don't go when I need to, um, and then I'll just get an infection, and I know the medication I have to take, I know what I have to do, but it really isn't any fun, and it can really kind of mess up the week or day. One more thing I wanted to add about the lifestyle is that often it's really hard for me to find things that I can eat that'll not upset my stomach. I can't have fried foods, I can't have pistachios, which is interesting, I know. Anything that's really greasy really bothers me, um, and I get really nauseous and that can last for hours, and so I really have to pick and choose my foods wisely. Once I had chicken strips, like fried chicken strips um, from a local diner, and I had diarrhea for a full 24 hours, and that was really rough and hard to deal with. Um, and it was then that I knew I really had to start making those dietary changes in order to accommodate Jamal, my, my J pouch, Jamal. So far with my stoma, I've had no complications with the actual stoma itself. Her name is Mona and she's very well behaved. We get each other. The main complications that I've had is just in my rectum where I still have colitis, I still have inflammation. I pop a little steroid suppository up my butt every night and that has been great. But so far, no practical complications with the stoma. Can you say like body image, mental health stuff complications? Yes, though that has complicated things. Question four, if you haven't had the second surgery yet, which way are you leaning? So at first, when I first woke up with my stoma, I was like, I'm definitely getting this reversed. I only have to wait like six months and then it's gone, it's fine. But then as I did more research and I spoke to people with pouches, I spoke to people who have had them and then gone back to a stoma, I spoke to surgeons, I spoke to stoma nurses, I spoke to consultants, IBD consultants, and just a lot of people who have been through it. And I made my pros and cons list and literally the only pro on it was losing the bag. And actually, I don't really mind about the bag. It's fine, it doesn't stop me doing anything. I'm pretty low output anyway. And I think you said in one of your videos once, if it ain't broke, and I booked in my permanent surgery and I have my Barbie butt surgery April this year. And I would do it again and again and again and again. And it's the best decision ever because now I don't pass mucus anymore. I haven't had my second surgery yet. I do have a temporary ileostomy. I am thinking I'm gonna keep my bag. Um, I have gotten on so well with it and 
the reason why I'm leaning towards permanent bag surgery rather than pouch is because of the unknowns of pouch surgery and I have got very comfortable with my bag. It means I can go out and I can have a life and it has given me so much that, that I've gotten used to it and I have a lovely boyfriend who has only ever known me with my bag so that's also something that I don't worry about. Um, so I'm, I'm enjoying bag life and I think the unknowns of J-pouch surgery outweigh the fact that, that I would not have a bag anymore. Still planning to have my colon removed now and then eventually my rectum when once I've had children. Because I've not had children yet, I don't want my um, risk of infertility. But that's why I've chosen to have a permanent ileostomy over a J-pouch. So personally, I'm leaning towards getting a permanent stoma. And that is not an easy decision to make. When I think about the idea of having a stoma tomorrow, I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I got this. Tomorrow, piece of piss. But then when I think about having a stoma forever, hmm, I really struggle <laughs> with that concept. So there's a few reasons why I'm leaning towards having a permanent stoma. One is because my stoma is very well behaved. As I mentioned, I understand this process. It is what I know. It works fine for me. I have adjusted very well to it. And if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Another reason is kind of like, as you heard, there are some complications that come with having a J pouch and actually up to 50% of patients will experience pouchitis, which is basically like ulcerative colitis, but in your pouch. Whereas, if I get my rectum removed, colitis is gone. Like I literally do not have the disease anymore. Like that's it. Colitis can only occur in your large intestine and your rectum. You remove those organs, no more colitis. So that is definitely very appealing to me. And one of the things that can happen if you have lots of complications with a J pouch and your body just rejects the new organ and it's just like not working for you is that you would then have to have that reversed again and you'd have to have a new stoma and that new stoma wouldn't be Mona. That new stoma would be a different stoma entirely because the part of your intestine that they used to create the J pouch, from what I've heard, that part of your intestine is like useless now. You That is gone. And so the new stoma would be coming out of a different part of the organ, um, maybe a different part of your stomach, I'm not sure. Um, so there's no knowing how well that stoma would behave. Wouldn't be as well behaved as Mona here. Also with a J pouch, I'd get urges to poo again and I would have like less control over my bowel movements because I would need to go when I needed to go. Whereas like, I'm just pooing constantly. I don't ever like have to rush to the toilet necessarily, unless like my bag is really full and about to explode. But most of the time I'm like, guys, I could go for hours without needing to go to the toilet because I've got a bag to catch it. I'm wearing an adult nappy. The main reason why I would want a J pouch though, is so I don't have a stoma bag. It's so I like can see my stomach again, which I don't know, maybe is a vain shallow reason, but I don't think that should be discredited. Like that's important to me and that's fine. But I don't know, I think the other things kind of outweigh it, but I think it's totally fine to have that as a consideration. I would like to not shame myself into caring about my appearance. Thank you very much. And that is important to some people, including myself, but also being in control of my body after going through a horrendous time of being completely not in control of my body. That is also very important to me. So, hmm. <laughs> But like I said, if it can be helped, I want to wait until after I've had kids to make the decision of which way I want to go. Doctors haven't given an exact timeline on it, on when I would need to have kids by or when I would need to decide, but they do kind of say like, soon-ish because the longer you just leave your rectal stump hanging out in there, your chances of rectal cancer increase quite significantly. Um, like in, in medical doctor terms, it gets into the double figure percentages, which is apparently quite high. But we shall see, and thank you so much for joining me on this journey, allowing me to share my thoughts and experiences with you. And thank you to all of the people who submitted clips for this video and shared your experiences with us too. So, so, so appreciated. Thank you 
so much. If you have a J pouch or a stoma, I would love to hear in the comment section your answer to those four questions and where you're currently at in all of this stuff. And also if you have a different kind of condition and you also have to kind of like make a choice at some point between different options for your future, for your body medically or whatever that is, I would love for you if you're comfortable to share your experiences and your thought process with that and maybe you can find other people in a similar situation to you in the comments. Please do give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe because I make new videos every week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!